um, and I'll be your I will be your host for today. Thank you so much for joining everyone, uh, the audience, the speakers, and thank you so much the COP26 coalition for all your your help in organizing this. It's, it's very nice for us to be a part of this uh, huge effort from the civil society groups in a framework of the COP. Um, for those of you who uh, don't know Gaia, Gaia is a global alliance of over 800 groups, uh, grassroots NGOs, individuals in 90 countries. Uh, we work uh, for a just zero waste, zero waste world, built on respect for ecological limits and community rights, where people are free from the burden of toxic pollution and resources are sustainably conserved, not burned or dumped. So uh, we are hosting this webinar today. And uh, we have today a session to speak about how zero waste is um, one of the uh, easiest, fastest strategies to come uh, to fight climate change. And also it's a strategy where climate resilience and climate change mitigation actually actually meet social justice. Zero waste is very much uh, rooted in social justice. So this is what we're going to discuss today. And we have a, an amazing panel of people in the front line who are showing how zero waste is uh, a, not only a climate solution, but it's, all, it's a, already proving to divert uh, waste disposal by 85% and looking for solutions for the remaining 15%. So before we... Um, before we start, uh, before I introduce you to the panel, let me give you a little bit of background of what we're talking about when we say zero waste, when we talk about waste and climate. So um, usually the waste sector in the climate inventory, in the climate emission inventories is uh, considered in, related to the direct emissions that come from the disposal of waste. Uh, and that's already quite a huge uh, uh, contribution to climate change. Uh, landfills, for example, uh, are the, the third largest source of global anthropogenic methane emissions. And both the waste and waste, uh, wa wastewater sectors are projected to be the largest source of increased methane emissions between now and 2030. So something to look at uh, in the future, in, in present and in the future. Uh, and for instance, incinerators, uh, municipal solid waste incinerators are also um, um, emitters of greenhouse gas emissions, uh, uh, even emitting a higher, uh, le higher level of emissions than burning fossil fuels. So that's the direct, em the direct emissions coming from the waste sector are already a major source of greenhouse gas emissions. But however, that's only part of the story because when we are implementing strategies on the waste sector, when we are, we, we are implementing uh, zero waste strategies, we are not only reducing the emissions, the direct emissions from the uh, waste sector, but we're also creating a ripple, a ripple effect and uh, impacting the entire, the entire materials economy. So when we think that 62% of the global greenhouse gas emissions come from the entire materials economy, thinking from extraction to manufacturing to disposal, we can understand how the potential in zero waste is huge actually to, to reduce carbon emissions. Um, when we think only about plastics, if, if we look at the plastic production, the plastic uh, use and disposal, we can see the plastics alone with the projected uh, uh, production growth are estimated to emit over, to, yeah, to consume over one third of the entire car carbon budget uh, on a two uh, degree Celsius scenario by 2100. Uh, uh, so again, thinking about zero waste, we're tackling all, not only the waste uh, disposal um, phase of, of waste, but we're also tackling um, the entire materials economy. And when we talk about zero waste, we are talking of, we're talking about a goal, a goal to end waste disposal in landfills, dumps, incinerators, and all the associated uh, variations of incinerators, call them waste burning in cement kilns, call them uh, chemical recycling associated with plastics to fuel, etc. 
Uh, and we're also talking about a roadmap on how to get to that uh, end of waste disposal. Uh, and that uh, roadmap includes reducing waste generation through tackling the production uh, in, as a priority, the production of, we need to control the materials that we put in the market and zero waste is uh, looking into that. And it also talks about consumption, reducing consumption and taking it to uh, limit within the ecological limits. And that of course translates into less mining, less deforestation, less energy use, uh, less um, uh, supply chains that are shorter, so there's a, a lot of um, improvements and, and, and mitigation of climate change in that, uh, in, already in that strategy. Zero waste is also about building the necessary infrastructure for uh, reusing, repairing, recycling, composting. And that per se is a, is a major driver to boost local economies, um, creating local supply chains, creating uh, a, a, a whole industry around the reuse and repair and recycling and composting sector. And I would say most importantly, zero waste is a waste management strategy that, that puts people at the center. We don't only care about conserving resources, but we care about people and we care that the, those in the front lines, whether they are people suffering from living next to a landfill or an incinerator or waste pickers, waste workers are at the front line of the, both the design and the implementation of zero waste systems. Uh, zero waste systems, especially in the global south, are uh, systems that are decentralized. So instead of having one big, huge incinerator or landfill costly, uh, impactful for the surrounding communities, we will see in a zero waste system, a variety, a multiplicity of sorting centers, composting plants, repair uh, shops, reuse shops, etc. So uh, that also is a very um, uh, favorable to the local economy and it also creates jobs and formalizes the jobs of those already doing the work. So when we talk about zero waste, we're talking about uh, climate, we're talking about the environment, we're also talking about people and uh, bringing social justice to those already doing the work for so many decades uh, around this. And the panel today will, um, the, our session today will speak about that. We will hear from people who are in the front lines implementing zero waste systems, advocating for better uh, climate action at the local level. That again, triggers a much larger um, effects on the entire materials economy. So our panel today is amazing. We will hear from Ana Rocha. She's the executive director of Nipe Fajio in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. We will hear from Krishna. He's a dry waste collection center operator in uh, the organization Hasirudala in Bangalore, India. We will uh, watch a video from Rina Begam. She couldn't join because she had a, a family emergency, unfortunately. So we'll uh, watch a video from Rina. She is the president of the Waste Speakers Union in Bangladesh. And we will hear from uh, Maksud, uh, a colleague of her who will be sharing some words with us today. Then we will hear from Saira Bano. She's a uh, president of Safai Sena in Delhi in India. And uh, last but not least, we will hear from Clau Berleite. He's a member of the Brazilian Zero Waste Alliance. So, um, as we start with the panel, let me just say that uh, we will, after we hear from the speakers, we will have some time for questions and answers and some conversations. So if you have any questions for the panel, please put it in the chat. And again, remember to put on your translation settings so that you can hear everyone in your language. So I'll stop sharing and we can give the floor to Anna. So, um, as Anna, if you want to share your screen, I can. Um, let me introduce you. So, Anna Rocha is, again, she's uh, from Nipe Fajio, from Tanzania. She's actually Brazilian, but she lives in Tanzania. And Nipe Fajio is an organization that works to raise awareness 
address and engage civil society, the private and the public sector in pursuing a sustainable lifestyle, in ident identifying opportunities to improve waste management and reduce urban pollution through education and actions that create economical value. And they are implementing uh, community-led zero waste systems in Tanzania that she will share a little bit about. Thank you, Anna. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you, and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so I'd like to share with you a little bit about the waste situation and the zero waste model that are implementing in Tanzania, and also how zero waste systems in general can contribute to climate mitigation. So we have a zero waste model here that we started implementing in 2019. And basically that model, uh, that model is based on three pillars. One is that it needs to be good for people and planet. So it needs basically to align social environmental benefits. Um, it's decentralized. So we are basically proposing decentralization of waste management. And that's because a country like Tanzania and many other countries in the world actually have uh, overwhelming overwhelmed public services. So you can't rely on the government to solve everything all the time. And then it is awareness building. Um, so it, it make people understand that um, not all kinds of waste are the same and that we need to handle waste in different ways depending on, on the uh, category of waste that we're talking about. Um, so the model they're implementing is considerably cheaper um, so it actually makes a lot of sense, especially for a low income country. Um, it creates more and better jobs and uh, it improves the climate balance and it also promotes a just recovery. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about how we are doing that. So why is zero waste needed? Why are we talking about zero waste right now? Why is zero waste needed? Um, so a city like Dar es Salaam, basically, I say that we don't actually have waste management, we have waste mismanagement. Um, less than 40% of the households here are estimated to have any access to waste collection. And those rates are actually much higher in low income neighborhoods. So we actually have lots of um, neighborhoods in the city that do not have a way to dispose their waste. Um, we have done a survey and about 67% of the uh, people in Dar es Salaam say that the reason why they end up throwing their waste in the rivers is exactly because they don't have access to waste management. Um, and 70% of the city lives in um, unplanned, unplanned underserviced areas, meaning that they don't have access to public services and that the roads are actually not very good. They are um, several times rough roads and several times also very narrow roads that a truck cannot pass through. So this is to give you an idea about how it looks like. And so when you're thinking about waste management, if you're thinking about big trucks going to collect waste, um, you can see on the second picture on, um, on the right, on the top, you can see that you can actually get uh, a truck to pass through those roads. Um, and so the, what people consider several times the ideal waste management model is basically not viable in a place like this. Um, so how then, how can we make this work? How does zero waste work? Um, so first of all, we are talking about a cooperative led model. Um, we actually organize cooperatives of waste collectors and these cooperatives are formed by former waste speakers, um, women, and then other interested community members, several times youth. Um, we have very high rates of unemployment um, in Tanzania and in Dar es Salaam. And so we have lots of people that would like to uh, make an income by participating in the cooperatives. Um, so then what is the, the first step to make this, this work is basically make sure that all the solid waste that is produced at the household level is segregated at source. Um, we actually do that segregation in four different kinds of ways. So basically um, organic waste, residual waste, recyclable waste and then hazardous waste. We teach people how to do that and we make sure that we have um, the cooperative members knowing basically that very well so they can teach people on a daily basis when, as they are collecting the waste. And that, that segregated waste is there 
and transport to the MRF to the material recovery facility, which as I said in the beginning, we are proposing decentralization. So we have a material recovery facility in the neighborhood um, to receive that waste and then it's further segregated um, and we make sure that everything that is organic is actually um, either we have two, two things that we do with organic waste. One is composting and the other is producing chicken feed. Um, so we use black soldier flies for that. Um, and then everything that is recyclable is actually sorted properly so that we can sell to recycling companies, to local recycling companies. And then only the residual waste gets transported to what we have, which is a dump site. We don't actually have a sanitary landfill in Barcelona. So, that sounds awesome, but does it work? Um, that's something that we, we hear all the time. Does it actually work? So we have been done that um, for two years now, and we had COVID-19 in the middle <laughs> of that journey. And yes, it works. So if you, if you see here, we actually are able to service the neighborhoods um, that we service at less than 50% of the annual projected official budget for waste management for those neighborhoods. So as I said, it's much cheaper. We have engaged over 32,000 people um, in the model, and we actually have created in the neighborhoods that we work 33 times more jobs than in the entire city. Um, Dar es Salaam, despite being a city that has about 7 million people, it only hires as a city one person for waste uh, management. Um, that's the only person that is solely dedicated to that. We have been able to create in one neighborhood uh, more jobs than the entire city. Um, would people actually in a low-income neighborhood segregate waste at source? So our compliance to segregation, segregation at source rate is actually at 93%. So yes, um, I'm someone who believes in people. So I believe that when people are given a good chance, a good choice, they make that choice. And so that's exactly what is going on. And we actually have 75% uh, reduction in waste to dump sites. So we only transport and we actually believe that this um, percentage can increase with time but for now it's about 75 percent of the waste locally um, managed and only 25 percent needs to be transported uh, so this is an uh, a picture just for you to understand how the material recovery facility at bonyoko it's one of the zero waste neighborhoods that we have in dar es salaam um, works so basically have chambers for composting um, and then we have space for every single kind of uh, recyclables. So great, so how does that relate to climate in any way? So C40 has actually done an evaluation of greenhouse gas emissions in Dar es Salaam and waste happens to be um, the, the principal contributor um, to emissions. So 40% of all the emissions in Dar es Salaam actually come from waste. Um, about 46% of that from solid waste. Um, so we actually need to think about waste if you want to think about climate, uh, especially in a low income country, especially in sub-Saharan Africa as well. So yes, it's related to climate. And when you think about organic waste, which is a very high composition, it varies from 60 to 70% of all the waste that is collected. Um, organic waste is actually a main uh, contributor to greenhouse gas emissions, exactly because unmanaged organic waste, when uh, thrown at a landfill or at a dump site, ends up um, um, producing methane. And so it's very important for us to think about organic waste. And when you think about sub-Saharan Africa, and low income, low income countries in general, um, organic waste needs to be properly managed. And then the second biggest uh, contributor to emissions in the, when you think about waste comes with like plastic waste. And so we have done lots of surveys here with the, we do marine litter monitoring um, here in Dar es Salaam. And one of the things that you see, all the ones that have uh, a line on the left side are all kinds of plastic. So in every single marine litter survey that we do, we actually find, oh, sorry. We actually find a lot of plastic that is unmanaged and then is dumped into the environment. And so what the zero waste model allows us is to basically collect those before they reach the waterways. Um, and by that, 
we can ensure that everything that can be recycled is recycled, but you can also ensure that you have enough data on everything that cannot be recycled, and then you can advocate for better policies and, uh, and better management of those kinds of waste. And so then well, let's think a little bit about waste and job generation. And Gaia has actually released the report um, on zero waste and economic recovery. And one of the things that you actually see is that um, the best environmental outcomes in terms of the, the options of those reports that include repair, recycle, uh, remanufacture, composting and all of that, and end up actually generating 200, 200 times more employment opportunities um, than the traditional um, waste management um, options that people have and then um, incineration that include incineration and, and landfilling. And so it's like higher employment opportunities, but more than that is actually better employment opportunities. We are talking about giving vulnerable populations the opportunity to actually have access to income and through a job that is dignifying uh, because it, it is connected to the community and to community recognition. And that's something that is extremely important also to change, not just changing um, the access to income, but also changing the way that people are perceived by the communities. And in the case of Africa, talking about Africa as well, uh, that report also shows that countries like um, Ethiopia, Senegal, um, South Africa, and then Tanzania um, could actually generate very high um, job opportunities if you if you see um, the red um, the red portion of these graphs they show basically the net jobs gains in each one of these countries if zero waste is fully adopted so then i i re-ask the question why is zero waste needed um, and my hope is that after the presentation um, many of the people here would be able to answer that question better than me so for that, I say Asante Nisano, thank you. And I always finish this sentence that I think it's at least the sentence that I work for, which is we do not inherit the planet from our parents, we borrow it from our children. So we need to basically um, implement better systems so that our children have access um, to the world that they deserve. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Oh. Sorry, Ceci, you are muted. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, um, thank you so much for your presentation. And I think that uh, the models you are creating in, in Tanzania uh, are, you know, show a picture of how many community groups, many NGOs, many way speakers groups are really leading the way in how we should make a better uh, use of our resources, right? And I think that figure that you mentioned that you, the city only has one person hired for waste management is a, bit, is a good illustration of what happens in, in, in many cities, in many municipalities of uh, lots of jobs being created. Like the speakers are really the ones who have put in place recycling systems in places where there was no recycling system. And so are many NGOs and community groups. So um, I think it's, it's, a, it's a nice example of, you know, uh, people and workers uh, pushing the boundaries and saying we can do better than this and showing the examples how that is done and sustaining many jobs in that, in that journey. So I think uh, it's quite illustrative of, of what governments should be looking at and supporting and building from. Um, so thank you very much for sharing that information with us, that experience and congratulations. Um, we're going to move to the next speaker, which is, uh, who is Krishna. And Krishna will speak in, um, in his language in Canada. So we will please make sure that you are in the correct translation channel. Uh, so Krishna, uh, he's a dry waste collection center operation uh, operator, sorry, for, um, um, in Bangalore. In, he's part of the organization Hasirudala, and he, uh, he has the floor, Krishna.
I am not able to hear him clearly, Cecilia. Um, yes, I think the connection from Krishna is not. Can you hear him now? I started my job in Bangalore as waste picker. I slowly improved in my position and I joined Asrudala. I'm working as a waste picker right from young age. My dad, my grandparents, and me, even me, I'm doing the same job, waste picking job. I don't feel embarrassed to do this job. I really don't feel embarrassed. I feel happy to do this job, in fact. Because I'm able to help the people with me. Madam 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 Hello 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 We can hear you. Alice are you getting I am able to hear him I am able to hear him Cecilia but he is not able to hear me Oh I see. Um, if you, Deborah or someone from support can. Maybe if you switch to the other channel to, to speak with him. No, 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 no. He wants to say more. He, he's thinking that we already stopped him. Can anyone no, no, no. contact can him? Go. Yeah, but he's not able to hear us. Ah. Uh, mm. He's able so to hear Alice, us. Alice, in, in the interpreter, if you change your output channel from English to Canada, he will be able to hear you, and you can just tell him that, that you're ready to do the interpretation and then switch back. Yes, I did it. I did it. Okay, great. While I work as a way speaker, in 2012, when I started dry waste collection per day, I was able to collect 50 to 80 kg of dry waste per day. But we had to go to every house, create awareness in them. Since we worked so hard now, For now, we are able to collect 2,000 to 2,500 kg of dry waste per day. 
எந்த லெவலுக்கு வச்சுன்னு நீங்க பாத்தீங்கன்னாக்கா நிஜமா சொல்றேன் ஒன்னும் எவ்வளவு பேரு badly. but we work right from picking those waste and getting it to the recycle factory mind paare madam waste illada namba oora panna mudiyadhu we can't we can bring a situation where there is zero waste because plastic ta vandittu addict aagirukkaranga because people are addicted to plastic makkal janathoga jaasti aagudhu thavara kammi aagudhu day by day population keeps increasing so waste also will gradually increase so if we have to protect from this tragedy our country madam kekkingala madam ah idilende nama naata nama kaapathanum appadina ka if we have to protect a country from this waste vargam neenga paathinga ka eppadi irundhalo ellaru veetukku illana ka we have to find the source of the waste from house company office we do we do get it separately dry waste and waste wet waste but sometimes we do mix it also but whenever it is get mixed that is where the problem starts because if we segregate the waste we can treat it properly you can either convert it into biogas or energy or whatever if they are not going to mix the dry waste with other waste we are we are able to categorize at least 25 to 30 varieties in dry waste so since not not everything can be recycled we are going to be keep stuffing it in the landfills people think they just pick wakes they don't have any knowledge but i don't agree with that because waste pickers are equally knowledgeable they they have good update of what's happening in the world how to segregate waste a app was developed by me and and an it company i developed my own app actually so that app would sh- would say which house they segregated the waste which house they did not everything will be shown in the app so so if a house they deliver the waste segregating it the waste picker himself will give him a star will give him a good rating to the household so we did a pl- pilot program like that we we uh, we were able to do segregation for the whole block in that area by by using this method overall nam life fullave waste la nam fulla vela seivrom we we spend all our time handling the waste even though they do so much hard work they their lifestyle their standard of living is very very bad for whatever things that were low cost they used to collect it they store it 
and then they give it as a big quantity to the factory because of that our country has um, improved a lot so those weights waste which didn't have a market is does have a market now because of waste pickers so once uh, a waste gets market even big companies get involved in this so no one can say waste picker is ignorant he doesn't have any knowledge the companies think that they they are more intelligent they can do something out of the waste being in this waste picker community doing all the work hard work uh they they boast as if they know everything and they say that we don't know anything but i don't agree with it so from from my young age i have done so much uh, collecting the waste from the residential area and dropping it into landfill so when there is a when you say waste waste picker is the main person in that so a law should be uh, enforced i feel no one no one should uh, i would feel very happy if the government gives importance to waste pickers because without waste pickers waste cannot be handled at all I, i i go to government schools i create awareness to children i work even with the uh, indian army i help them i i teach them about segregation i do we do service for them too so doing this we do so much we do so much for the country but we don't get the due recognition by the state so whoever is watching this show whoever is listening to this show i want them to do something for us so that they put us in the front line recognize their work but waste pickers are very much needed in segregating the waste in the waste management in fact so they should in, they should include waste pickers in each and everything before they could uh, bring bring any law even if there is a, going to be a program it would be nice if they can waste pickers in it because we have done much we would do uh, in the future too we do this work heartfeltly for the planet earth because we sacrifice our own life for this work so so i request you to uh, place us in the front line way speakers thank you very much for giving me this opportunity thank you very much uh, krishna for sharing uh, your work and definitely if uh, the work of you and all the way speakers was supported with ninga moochu vaangreenga na sollundu mulusa sollunge ninga sonningala madam and and the app de engala uttiti edhu theriyadinga ninga illa madam and and the mobile mobile app la ninga pannindhu nu sollindinga ah alice can you tell him oh, that okay. we uh or that he has one more minute please or is he done i think he's done okay uh ipo na or mobile app pathi solli nindingala madam and the mobile app and the mobile app evlo edathula naanga poi pesnom idu inda level ku successful ah irukku idu or app segregation system indha app 
Oh. The mobile, the mobile app Krishna was talking about some time back. It was very famous. Mm -hmm. Ah, the mobile app on the madam. You will have all the solution. Ah, what to what the system and the waste segregation again in the app or solution could give. But do, this the, mobile app gives solution to many of the problems. But no one took interest in it. No one took the initiative to take it to the next level. I have the whole data with me. If you are free, I can show it, show it to you one time. In a house where there was zero segregation, it came to 100% segregation. But no one is coming forward to improve that app. I don't know, is it because it's app made, uh, created by the waste speaker that they're neglecting it? I am feeling bad actually about it. But we created that app out of our own idea. It was our own invention actually. We do have many uh, skills within us, but society is not allowing us to bring out our skills outside. No one is bringing out his abilities outside. If there is an NGO who will help us to bring out our skills, I can say that is Hazrudala in Bangalore. Uh, they focus on making the worst way speakers, the entrepreneurs, they help them improve their life. So the NGO Asradala works on it actually. Each way speaker has ideas, good ideas, great ideas. Uh, way speakers can be called as um, uneducated doctors, in fact. He, he's Thank asking, you. does he have still more time? Unfortunately, we have to uh, move on to the next speaker. Okay, one second. Um, but thank you so much, Krishna, and you are, I hope you are, uh, um, uh, there's people in the chat appreciating <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, I think we need to move on to the next speaker, but again, thank you, Krishna, very much. And I, I just wanted to say that if uh, all the work that's been done by with speakers, grassroots, et cetera, was supported with uh, investments, with policies from the governments, we would be in a different place. And uh, instead of that, unfortunately, we're looking, we're seeing how government international international agencies are actually narrators, uh, um, false solutions, including chemical recycling in plastics. So. Um, the idea here is to show how a different way is possible. It's actually happening. We have municipalities diverting 80% of the waste with community-led solutions. Waste speakers are leading recycling rates in the global south. So if only the support was taken to, to those experiences, um, the, 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 the impact would be much higher. We're going to move on to the next speaker now. We are actually all. Um, from Rina, Rina Begum. Uh, she's the president of the Black Bangladeshi Way Speakers Union. She unfortunately couldn't join today because of a family emergency, but we are going to watch a video that she that she um, shooted, and we are all, we are then going to hear some words from her colleague Maxud. So we we can play the video, please. Amar. Like me, 2,500 people are living in Matwell dump site and collect waste materials for their survival. When I came here 22 years ago, I could work around the year. But now, because of climate change effect, rain comes anytime. 
Waste mixes with rainwaters and we cannot work. Rainwater mixes with dirt and always come to our locality and pollutes our environment. Mosquitoes increases and we have to suffer from dengue and other deadly diseases. Dhaka City Corporation is planning to generate electricity through incineration of waste which will deprive waste pickers to collect waste for their livelihood. We, Bangladesh Waste Pickers Union, raise our demand for claiming our rights. If you all are with us, then we must win. Wonderful, thank you. Um, this is what I was talking about. We are uh, alarmingly seeing many waste to energy projects in places where recycling uh, is led by waste speakers that is going to take away the livelihood from those people and it's going to lock in those municipalities from doing good things for two or three generations. So uh, um, the idea here is to show how a better way is possible. If we can hear Maksud, um, if you're around a few yes. words from yes so Maksud uh, is a colleague from from Saira he, uh, sorry from Rina he also works with the um, waste uh, pickers union in, in in Bangladesh and from Gran Bangla Unayan committee thank you Maksud yeah. thank you Cecilia uh, uh, I'm working uh, uh, with the uh, West Speaker Union Bangladesh as a volunteer uh, since 2008, uh, and I was given this responsibility from my organization, Gram Bangla Unnan Committee. And uh, parallelly, uh, Gram Bangla Unnan Committee raising fund and operating daycare center and school and skill development training center around the biggest waste dump site of Dhaka city, that is Matuel waste dump site. And we are holding uh, currently 2038 uh, children who are mostly withdrawn from the waste dump site because the uh, children are also collecting waste uh, with the mothers. And uh, we are uh, creating you know, uh, uh, jobs uh, for the adolescent girl, uh, adolescent waste pickers to skill development training. But uh, here, uh, Rina, you know, uh, mentioned one thing, and there, um, at the West Speaker, the, she mentioned that uh, 2,500 families around the wisdom side, uh, uh, and uh, near about 10,000 people, their livelihood depend on the wisdom side, and they collect waste, they sell it, and they make a small money, and they pay, uh, pay their slum households rent, they buy food, you know. And though uh, in the COVID situation, uh, for many days they had to stop. And uh, most recently, you know, Bangladesh government and uh, especially the energy minister, you know, uh, his uh, and his uh, associate businessmen are very eager to, uh, uh, you know, buy technology for incineration. And they are in the dream that they will capture electricity and they'll make big money out of it, uh, destroying all the livelihoods of the West speakers. So, uh, 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 this process has been started and uh, the landfill authority is uh, in different parts of Bangladesh is restricting access to the West Picker to the West Dam side. It's a great concern. And uh, uh, the West Picker Union repeatedly raised their voice through uh, press conference, but because of COVID situation, their efforts also was not so you know, strong. Uh, hopefully uh, now onwards uh, they will uh, you know raise their voice again and uh, we believe that uh, uh, they will be able to make a uh, difference uh, bangladesh you know is a densely populated uh, country currently you know 160 million people live and there are 38 percent people live in the urban area uh, estimate says that you know uh, near about you know uh, uh, 600 thousand you know, uh, with speakers, uh, people are uh, engaged in collecting, sorting, recycling, and, you know, processing works. It's a huge community in Bangladesh. They're depending uh, for their livelihood. Uh, uh, but the uh, macro level design, you know, is putting this community into uncertainty, huge uncertainty. And uh, uh, 
Gram Bangla, you know, uh, is uh, working with them as volunteers. And uh, in uh, 2015, they formally formed the, you know, union, and we are uh, um, volunteering with them for registration and, you know, organizational development. And we are also working um, uh, along with the speaker union. We, 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 uh, we are establishing relationship with the Bangladesh Trade Union Center the biggest, uh, uh, you know, trade union organization, so that, you know, the real, you know, uh, uh, workers union leader can help them, can, you know, uh, cooperate them in, in raising their voice. So this is the uh, situation here, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, yeah, but, you know, Bangladesh is a riverine country and uh, more than, you know, uh, 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 1,000 river ports are there, small, small ports, you know, there. And in every river ports, you will find, you know, um, uh, 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 homeless children and they are street children, they are, you know, actually, uh, they are West speaker children. They also risk their life in collecting, you know, uh, especially pet bottle, uh, plastic bottle and other recyclable material from the water transport from the different kinds of, even they jump into the river to collect, uh, you know, wet, uh, plastic bottles and they recover it and they sell it and they have food, you know. But, you know, uh, from the uh, producers, you know, from the producers, plastic producers, the big companies are there, the uh, international uh, corporates, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and local level Square, you know, uh, Kia Cosmetics, these uh, thousands of, you know, different uh, companies are producing these plastics, but it's still, you know, uh, these companies are not taking any responsibility in, in uh, you know, uh, managing this kind of waste. So we are in great concern. And we are um, uh, at great concern with the uh, with speaker community. And uh, one thing is very um, uh, important here that um, the middle class people and lower middle class people, or everybody are getting COVID vaccine. You know, but most of the West speaker in Dhaka city, they don't have any national ID card, national identity card, because they are homeless. They are, you know, uh, they are, uh, uh, they have lost their households in the rural area. So they have migrated here. They could not manage their national ID card. And without showing a national ID card, you won't be able to uh, uh, get a vaccine. So uh, here also a huge, uh, you know, uh, inequality and disparity in getting uh, vaccination cover is also what is uh, with speaker community. That is another concern. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for uh, allowing me uh, to speak on behalf of Rina Begum. Uh, she, is, uh, she had to go to uh, her village because one of our relatives are very sick. Uh, she regularly joins this meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Maksud. And uh, it's a, a good picture of um what uh false solutions look like right uh, we are and we are uh, worryingly seeing uh, ifis uh, international financial institutions even climate funding uh, thinking of going to these incinerator projects that the paradox in the global south is that most of the waste is organic so it doesn't burn so um the promises to create energy are false because there's no uh, the, the materials don't don't burn that way so and that's why the incinerators will need recycling materials that are already being collected by waste pickers so it's a whole um, situation there that um, is uh, it's is very worrying and it's also very expensive and it will, it will not only destroy lots of livelihoods but also prevent the real solutions from being implemented for a long time so I think everyone working on the climate and on climate should be aware that uh, these are false solutions and there are there is a better way already happening it just needs more support um, we're going to move forward to with the, our next speaker um, our next speaker is Saira Bano she's the president of Safai Sena from Delhi uh, in India and Saira will speak in Hindi, I believe, and she will be translated as, uh, consequently, subsequently. So Saira, if you are there. Saira, you can keep your Yes, namaste. 
और मेरा नाम सैरा वानू है और मैं दिल्ली से ही बोल रहा हूँ और नेलफिल के पास मेरा घर है और यहीं पर बोलते धीरे धीरे बोलना को थोड़ा अनुवाद करना एक एक करके मैं इसको इंग्लिश में बोल देता हूँ नमस्ते माय नेम है सायरा बानो आई लिव नियर स्पेनिश आई लिव नियर लैंडफिल साइट इन डेली अब बोलिए आप हम लोग इवेस का इवेस का जो इवेस का जो हम लोग खत्म करना चाहते हैं जो इवेस हम लोग जो इवेस का हम काम करते हैं उसको हमको खत्म करने के लिए जो हमारा कबाड़ी भाई है उसके लिए जो हमारा सब कबाड़ी भाई को लेके जो इवेस का जो कूड़े का जो इवेस का जो हम लोग तोड़ फोड़ नहीं करते सिर से जलाते नहीं है so um the she saying that we are working to reduce our engagement with e waste and uh, our some of our friends do e waste recycling we do not break or burn e waste boliye aap bina bina jo hum log kawadi bhaiyon ke wajah bina kawadi bhaiyon ke wajah se to zero waste nahi hoga sab kawadiyon ko leke humme zero waste karna padega without the the scrap dealers and waste pickers there will not be any zero waste um, we have to be involved in the process of zero waste management boliye hum dot to dot jo collect karte hain aur gharon se jo kooda uthate hain usi liye kooda kam hota hai isme so she saying that we reduce the waste by picking up uh, by doing the dot to dot collection of waste or uh, the waste we pick up बोलिए जो हम गुला जो गीला कूड़ा होता है उसको हम अलग करते हैं और जो सूखा कूड़ा है वो हम अलग करके छटाई कर लेते हैं सो वी सेपरेट सॉर्ट द वेट वेस्ट एंड वी सॉर्ट द ड्राई वेस्ट और द वेट वेस्ट इज ऑर्गेनिक वेस्ट एंड ड्राई वेस्ट इज रिसाइक्लेबल्स इन अदर इनर्ट मटेरियल बोलिए जो सूखा कूड़ा होता है उसका हम छाट के मतलब अलग-अलग उसको अलग-अलग छाट लेते हैं और उसको रिसाइकिल करने के लिए भेज देते हैं सो द ड्राई वेस्ट व्हिच इंक्लूड्स रिसाइक्लेबल्स एंड इनर्ट वेस्ट वी सेंड इट फॉर रिसाइक्लिंग आफ्टर सॉर्टिंग अगर हम ऐसे नहीं करते हैं तो वो सारा कूड़ा नेल फिल में आएगा बड़ा खत्ता बन जाएगा और उसमें प्रदूषण ज्यादा होगा सो देयर विल बी एन इंक्रीज इन पोल्यूशन इफ वी डू नॉट डू आवर जॉब ऑफ सॉर्टिंग द ड्राई वेस्ट बिकॉज़ इट विल गेट मिक्स्ड अप विद द वेट वेस्ट देन इट विल गो टू द लैंडफिल साइट तो दिल्ली में कम से कम लगभग तो दो लाख कबाड़ी है और दो लोग जो दो लाख कबाड़ी है और ये सौ आदमी के पीछे ये कबाड़ी भाई हमेशा so she is saying that there are around 200000 waste pickers in delhi and after every 100 per people there is one waste picker वो सौ आदमी का सौ भाइयों का जो कबाड़ी होता है उसको हम उठाते हैं और रिसाइकिल करते हैं so after every 100 people there is one person who is a waste picker or a scrap worker so they take the material from those workers and then send it for recycling aage boliye kooda binne ka hum logo ka kaam hai aur private company aake wo kaam hamara matlab kam kar diya bahut jyada so the private companies are coming and taking away our work uh, we do the waste picking and waste sorting work and they are causing a lot of lot of harm to us kuda ka kaam bahut jakhim ka kaam hota hai phir bhi hum log usko uthane ka kaam karte hain apna sehat pe dhyan nahi dete hain so uh, the waste picking is a waste picking and waste collection is a very hazardous work uh, a lot of times we are not able to take care of our health हम लोग प्रदूषण को भी कम करते हैं और हम लोग बीमारी को भी कम करते हैं वी रिड्यूस द पोल्यूशन एंड वी आल्सो रिड्यूस द डिजीज मैं अपना बात बोलूं तो हम लोग 20 25 साल से काम कर रहे हैं इफ आई टॉक अबाउट माय सेल्फ वी आर वर्किंग फ्रॉम लास्ट 25 इयर्स 
हम लोगों को इतना तो अनुभव है कि हम कूड़े का आइटम को छटाई करके रिसल को दे सकते uh we do have an experience of what material has to be sorted in which category agar has us kooda ka hum utha ke agar nahi chatai karenge to usme gas ban sakta hai if we don't sort the material there are other issues with the waste material there can be gas form it can be mixed hum vatavaran ko bhi swasth rakhte hain aur ye kooda ko khatam karne ke baad and we also keep the environment clean and keep, uh, keep the environment clean by picking up the waste material delhi mein sabse zyada bahut kooda hota hai delhi has the largest amount of waste generated ah uh, jiske karan uh, landfill mein jitna kooda aata hai wo kooda uh, matlab landfill phat jata hai aag lag jata hai aur usme se bahut hua zareeli gas nikalta hai So she's saying that a, a lot of waste is generated in Delhi. It reaches the landfill, and it, it, the size of the landfill keeps increasing. And then sometimes there are fires in the landfill. There are explosions in the landfill. हम सब मिलके कूड़ा को कम करते हैं और गैस भी कम करते हैं और उसे रिसाइल करते हैं. So because of our work, uh, uh, we reduce the pollution, the the gas which is generated at the landfill site. We reduce that too because of our work. Twenty to thirty percent kuda ham kam karte hain. So with our work, we reduce around twenty to twenty five percent of waste. हमें सरकार से मान्यता दिया जाए जिससे हम कुछ कर सकें. so she is saying that with the government should recognize our work so that we can continue working so aur hum logo ka jo kaam hai bahut jakhim ka kaam hai phir bhi hum log karte hain aur hum log chahte hain ki ye jakhim ka kaam is samay sab cheez ka matlab evs ka kam saman use kara jaye और जितना भी कूड़ा भी जो घर से डोटो डोटो निकलता है उसको भी थोड़ा सा कम हो। we do a lot of it's a very difficult occupation and uh, we would like the waste material to be reduced the waste generated at the household level should also be reduced हम अपना जो काम करते हैं कूड़ा रिक्शा से करते हैं साइकिल से करते हैं उसमें प्रदूषण भी कम होता है so whatever we uh, the work we do uh, recycle and recycling it reduces the pollution significantly sarkar ko hame sab swasth suraksha dena chahiye the government should give us health security too jo police wale bhi tan karta hai jo kawadi bhai galiyon mein jata hai jo dotar thoda uthane jata hai to usse police wala bahut tan karta hai uske liye bhi hum chahte hai ki police wala na tuke So there is a lot of police harassment uh, from the places where the waste pickers and itinerant uh, buyers who go for waste collection they are harassed by the police authorities. We want that to be ended too. The Delhi में जितना भी छोटा छोटा कूड़ा दानी था उसको सब तोड़ा जा रहा है और मास्टर ने जो गाड़ी में कूड़ा उठा के ले जा रहा था उसके लिए भी हम लोगों ने रोज़ क्या करूँ? So she's saying that there are places where people could leave the waste. Now they are putting these huge vehicles in Delhi, uh, which are taking the waste materials away from from the city, and it's causing a loss, a lot of problem to waste pickers. हम लोगों को अगर हम लोगों को शामिल नहीं करता तो हम लोगों को वजह से कूड़ा कम होता है और हम लोगों को वजह से प्रदूषण भी कम होता है. Because of her work, the there is less waste and there is less pollution. और हम लोगों को जितना मान्यता मिलना चाहिए अगर मान्यता नहीं मिलेगा तो आगे कुछ काम होगा ही नहीं इफ यू आर नॉट रिकॉग्नाइज फॉर आवर वर्क वी कैन डू एनी मोर वर्क जो यहाँ का जो मिट्टी दूषित होता है जो नेल्फी के पास जो मिट्टी दूषित होता है वो ज्यादा जो कचरा पानी निकलता है उससे ज्यादा दूषित होता है so the soil around the landfill gets polluted because of the leachate which is generated by the landfill a kharab pani se zameen ka pani bhi bahut kharab ho jata hai 
even the underground water gets polluted because of the uh, the polluted leachate. Can Kabir, can you tell him, can you tell her that we she has one more minute, please? जो हम लोगों का जो यहाँ पर जो नैलफिल है आस पास में जो जल जाता है उसका जो गैस निकलता है उसके लिए वातावरण के लिए बहुत नुकसानदायक है लेकिन उसके लिए हम कुछ नहीं मतलब कूड़ा कम कर सकते हैं और जो काम हो सकता है डोटो डोटो वो भी कम कर सकते हैं और उसके लिए हम चाहते हैं कि ग्लास मिले मास मिले और अच्छे से जो कबाड़ी भाई है उनके लिए प्रस्ताव रखना चाहते हैं so she's saying that the, we reduce the pollution uh, which is generated from the landfill and because of our work we also engage in the door to door collection work and what we uh, are seeking as the waste pickers and scrap workers and other recyclers is that we need safety gear which means gloves which means mask and other safety equipment to be in place sabko mera dhanyawad aur mere ko bolne ka mauka mila she thanks and welcomes everyone and she thanks everyone for listening to her who have and also thanks the organizers who have given her a chance to speak thank you thank you very much saira and thank you kabir for the translation um thank you for sharing your your experience and and again it shows how uh in, uh, people are working on their own and suffering and exposed to a lot of threats, not only regarding pollution and, and things associated with waste, but also other social issues, including police harassment and other things. So um, I think it's important for us to realize the complexity around uh, including people, integrating people, recognizing people's work and, and all, all that we need to do in that regard. Um, I also wanted to share before I move on to the next speaker, uh, that the Global Alliance of Waste Speakers, uh, of which all uh, the three speakers we had today from the sector I, are part of, has uh, produced uh, a, me a methodology to measure, to estimate the greenhouse gas emission savings from waste speakers' work. Who, uh, savings that come from many things, including preventing open burning, recycling, and uh, reintroducing materials into the economy. So I'm going to share the link in the website, but if you can, uh, if you want to take a look at it, I think it's important also to follow what the Global Alliance of Waste Speakers is doing as they are getting organized to improve their waste management, their working conditions and, and gain the recognition that they very much deserve. Um, so I'm going to move on, give the floor to our next speaker with the last one, and I'm looking at time. Hope we have some time for questions. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Clauber Leite. Clauber is uh, from Sao Paulo, Brazil. He is part of the Sao Paulo Compost Cultivates campaign and uh, uh, from the uh, Brazilian Zero Waste Alliance. Uh, so, Clauber, if you want to uh, share your screen, we can give you the floor now. And Clauber will speak in Portuguese. So, again, make sure you have your interpretation channel correct. Thank you, Clover. Claro. Boa tarde, bom dia a todos. Obrigado pela pelo convite, especialmente Gaia, pela oportunidade. É, não sei, vocês estão conseguindo ver minha tela já? Sim? Ok. É, muito obrigado, Cecília. E pela oportunidade também de estar dividindo a nossa experiência aqui no Brasil e também escutar tantas experiências motivadoras e inspiradoras uh, que acontecem ao redor do mundo. Eu vou trazer um pouco o que já foi uh, dito e vou passar rapidamente sobre isso, mas uh, a situação aqui em São Paulo, uh, a gente é, junto com, com essa equipe que está aqui, Elizabeth, André e, e, e Victor, a gente organizou um, uma campanha né, sobre o Instituto Polis, é, sobre é, compostagem é, e cultivo é, para dar um destino a um resíduo orgânico. 
Aqui em São Paulo, a gente produz mais de 5 milhões de toneladas de resíduo urbano, né? é, que representa o um custo anual para o cofre público de 360 milhões de dólares, são 2 bilhões de reais. É, e mais de metade desse resíduo, como bem falado, é a realidade aqui no Brasil, são resíduos orgânicos. A gente vê aqui a, a composição é, da média do resíduo brasileiro. A gente vê é, que mais de metade é um, são resíduos orgânicos. É, 30% são os recicláveis secos. E o que chamamos de rejeitos está na casa de 17%. Qual que é o destino desse resíduo orgânico aqui é, no país? A gente tem destinado... É quase que a totalidade para o aterro sanitário. Pouquíssimo é, vá, vai para a coleta seletiva e menos ainda, quase ínfimo, para a compostagem. É, dentro da cidade de São Paulo existe uma iniciativa, mas no final eu vou falar as diversas iniciativas que existem, mas é, temos cinco pátios de compostagem é, que compostam resíduos de feiras e é, de podas. Né? Para mostrar a nossa realidade hoje. E o, o que tem, o que, qual que é o retrato que a gente vê né, do nosso resíduo hoje? A gente está é, no, no ciclo linear. Né? Com, com essas soluções sendo apresentadas, ainda a gente, embora não tenhamos Uh, incineradores ainda, mas há uma certa pressão, mas uh, ainda destinamos maior parte dos nossos resíduos para uh, aterro, uh, aterro sanitário. E estamos longe desse ciclo uh, que seria o ideal, que teria uma maior uh, eficiência e aproveitamento de todos os nossos recursos. Uh, Existe dentro da gestão de resíduos essa uh, hierarquia da, da gestão dos resíduos. E essa uh, hierarquia pode ser aplicada também para os resíduos orgânicos. E é isso que a gente uh, preza também nessa gestão. Porque não adianta também a gente uh, dizer que composta tudo que dar um tratamento adequado a tudo se a gente não está pensando nessa nessa cadeia. A gente precisa reduzir os desperdícios, a gente precisa reduzir as perdas é, e desperdícios, principalmente porque aqui a gente está falando é, de alimento. Então, é aí para ir, ir avançando nessa cadeia, aí sim, por fim, a gente aproveitar os nutrientes para o, o uso desses nutrientes depois de uma compostagem e um tratamento desse resíduo e, se porventura for o caminho, também fazer o aproveitamento do biogás gerado por conta dessa decomposição do resíduo. Bem, então, só reforçando que a compostagem e a gestão anaeróbia são dois caminhos que... É, saem um pouco desse caminho linear que está estabelecido e a gente começa a, a circular esse, e aproveitar melhor esse recurso natural, que são é, os resíduos. Então, é, aqui estão algumas definições da compostagem e da digestão anaeróbia. E esses são caminhos que também a gente acredita, são caminhos que é, cam é, nos levam na direção dessa nossa nossa filosofia, desse nosso ideal, que é o resíduo zero. Diferentemente do, do, do que é nos apresentado, que é uma solução falsa, como Cecília bem falou, é da, é, do resíduo, do aterro sanitário e do, do incinerador, que são falsas soluções. Aí se pergunta, mas por, o, que se, o que faz com... É, qual que é o produto que vem da compostagem e da digestão anaeróbica? 
a gente sabe que a gente se reduz o volume, né? e aquilo que resta não é, é não é rejeito, não é resíduo, e sim um produto que podemos aproveitar é, para usar no nosso campo. Né? Então, aqui é só um exemplo, alguns cálculos que fizemos para a região metropolitana de São Paulo, é, onde se gera 22 mil toneladas por dia de resíduo urbano, é, o que representa aproximadamente é, por ano 4,7 milhões de toneladas de resíduo orgânico é, e que, por, é, por fim, avançando, daria 1,7 milhões de toneladas de composto orgânico, esse resíduo orgânico que é, é mais ou menos é, daria para atender a demanda aqui é, na região metropolitana de São Paulo a gente tem o chamado cinturão verde onde é, é, é são produzidos é, alimentos nessa nessa região é, todo então todo esse resíduo é, gerado na é, na região metropolitana de São Paulo 71% poderia ser aproveitado somente aqui nesse cinturão verde para fazer o aproveitamento dessa, é, desse composto orgânico. Então, há uma solução. Né? É, claro que a gente sabe é, que é, o sistema não é perfeito, a gente sabe que pode ter perdas aí. Então, há é, demandas para esse, esse resíduo no cinturão verde, há demandas para esse resíduo para esse composto, na, por exemplo, na jardinagem, na conservação de áreas é, degradadas. Então, é, o que eu quero dizer é que a gente não está criando um problema, sim, apresentando soluções ao tratar também esse resíduo. Aqui é um pouco... É, como, é, no mapa, podemos ver aqui... É, o estado de São Paulo e onde há essa demanda. Então, é, a gente sabe que é, a, o resíduo produzido localmente não vai precisar viajar grandes é, grandes distâncias. A gente vai conseguir aproveitá-lo em pequenas distâncias. Né? E justamente para é, também produção dos alimentos. E falando... É, como foi bem falado também é, durante as outras apresentações, é, embora a gente tenha um, uma, a, as emissões dos resíduos é, ainda seja a terceira é, no, no âmbito geral de emissões, está atrás de algumas, mas a gente vê e vê com preocupação que essas emissões de resíduos têm crescido ano a ano. Essas aqui são as emissões brasileiras. Tá? A parte de baixo verde são as emissões... A gente trata as emissões dos, é, dos efluentes líquidos junto com do, dos resíduos sólidos. Abaixo a gente vê praticamente estável as emissões de, dos efluentes é, líquidos e uma crescente é, emissão dos resíduos orgânicos. E é, isso dos resíduos sólidos urbanos, que está relacionado aos resíduos orgânicos. Então, a gente é, ainda tem... É, e, e a perspectiva que temos para os próximos anos é de aumento dessas emissões. Por quê? Porque a, a destinação que estamos dando, ao, ao, a, estamos dando aos resíduos orgânicos é, é para aterro sanitário. O aterro sanitário ainda tem emissões fugidas por mais que se faça é, a coleta dos gases nos aterros, ainda tem emissões fugitivas desses gases. Então, e a solução proposta que a gente apresenta aqui para é, ser resíduo zero e ter uma redução de emissões é a compostagem, é a, é a digestão anaeróbica, por conta que são alternativas que reduzem a, as emissões. Aqui alguns exemplos é, do, do como a compostagem, é, por exemplo, pode é, e tem um potencial maior 
de redução de emissões. Né? A gente vê aqui que é, a compostagem pode é, reduzir até quase 70 é, no, no, é, vezes menos que um aterro sanitário. Né? Então, um aterro, mesmo um aterro com captação desses gases, há emissões fugitivas. É, no, no caso da compostagem, a gente sabe que a gente, a gente evita que se forme o metano, então não há essa emissão. É, que, num, num cenário realista, daria é, uma emissão perto de 4 milhões de toneladas de CO2 por ano, é, que, no caso aqui da cidade de São Paulo, é, a gente sabe que quase 8,2% são emissões é, provenientes desses resíduos orgânicos, e o que representa aí, é, é, uma redução equivalente a de 1 milhão e 600 é, mil automóveis. Né? Então, é, é algo considerável quando a gente compara... É, frente às emissões da cidade, das cidades. Né? O número de, de emissões é, por país, é, principalmente aqui no caso do Brasil, ele vem contaminado por, pela grande emissão que temos por conta da devastação das florestas. Então, a queima da, das florestas ainda é, é o, o principal problema do país, mas quando a gente trata as emissões de cidades, a gente vê que ainda o transporte e resíduos são os maiores emissores. É, o que, que a gente conclui? Né? A, a, a filosofia também do, que está por trás daquela hierarquia dos resíduos, dos cinco R's, do recusar, do reduzir, reusar, re, é, renovar né, e reciclar, é, reusar e reciclar, é, precisa também estar é, no cenário da quando a gente fala de emissões. Por quê? É, a gente sabe que tem emissões é, relacionadas à mudança de uso da terra, que é emissões relacionadas principalmente aqui no Brasil à, à pecuária. Então, quando a gente é, tem um uso adequado na pecuária, é, a gente consegue reduzir, reusar é, e reciclar lá na pecuária, a gente vai reduzir as emissões lá na pecuária, no setor que não está necessariamente relacionado aos resíduos. Então, a gente tem uma, uma, uma redução de emissões global, porque é, a visão por setores de emissões ela é, ela foi feita para a gente ter é, planos de ações e metas específicas para redução. Mas a gente sabe que a questão do resíduo ela é transversal, ela, ela age em toda a cadeia, desde, como eu falei, na mudança do uso da terra, da terra como é, no setor de energia, de processos industriais, também tem emissões é, relacionadas a, a resíduo. Então, essa, esse apelo, é, a gente não pode ficar tratando somente é, no fim do tubo, a gente precisa fazer é, é, essa reflexão desde o de, de início. Porque se houve é, uma geração de resíduos num certo processo industrial, se houve um, um exagero de emissões de gases de efeito estufa, houve um erro de design, houve um erro, um erro de engenharia. Alguém não pensou direito o, o como isso iria impactar lá no final. Então, Sim, Cecília. Clara, you have one more minute. Sim, é, já para as, para as conclusões. É, então, avançando, sabemos que há é, redução, é, só que é o estudo da, é, feito pela, pela Ellen Mercator é, mostra o, o, o quanto de impacto é, são gerados os sistemas alimentares. Eu vou deixar a apresentação para vocês e eu vou pular aqui esse slide para mostrar é, algumas iniciativas que estão ocorrendo aqui é, no país. Então, existiu aqui em São Paulo um projeto com posse cultiva. Então, são soluções é, também pequenas que dá para envolver 
o cidadão, a população, onde foram distribuídas composteiras para a, a população mesmo fazer o seu tratamento e a redução do seu resíduo. Há esse programa de feiras e jardins sustentáveis, onde todos os resíduos das feiras estão sendo destinados à a, 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 a compostagem. A cidade de Florianópolis, aqui no Brasil, é, aprovou uma lei para proibir a, o enterramento e a queima de resíduos orgânicos, com metas progressivas até 2030 zerar é, essa destinação inadequada. É, e aqui em São Paulo, o que a gente provocou, e aqui é, já concluindo, falando do, do projeto que temos aqui em São Paulo. É, desde as eleições, a gente é, lançou uma campanha é, chamada Campanha São Paulo e Composta Executiva, no qual, é, nas eleições, a gente já sensibilizou é, candidatos é, a vereador e a prefeito sobre essa plataforma de tratamento de resíduos orgânicos. É, exigimos aí, é, junto com uma rede de, de colaboradores, é, é, desses candidatos que se comprometessem a, a uma carta de compromisso que a gente a gente lançou, no qual é, a gente falava de resíduo zero, economia circular, é, inclusiva e compostagem, né? relacionando mudança climática, agroecologia e uma alimentação saudável. Aqui ó, são todos os parceiros que no Brasil apoiaram essa campanha, então foi uma forte mobilização da sociedade civil, é, com várias é, organizações que atuam em diversos temas, desde temas de resíduo, meio ambiente, clima, é, consumidores, é, emissões, água, foram vários parceiros que que atuaram e ajudaram e apoiaram essa iniciativa. É, criamos essa carta compromisso, atuamos no programa de metas e aqui, é, por fim, é, eu queria destacar é, o trabalho que é, é se inspirando na lei que foi feita em Florianópolis, estamos atuando aqui em São Paulo para que façam também uma lei é, similar que dê uma destinação correta aos resíduos orgânicos aqui na cidade de São Paulo. Aqui eu deixei algumas referências e, e fico à disposição aqui para o debate. Eu, muito obrigado a todos e especialmente a Gaia. Thank you very much, Clauber. Um, uh, thank you for adding the layer of organic waste. I think it's important. And um, we unfortunately run over time and we want to be respectful of the program of the People's Summit. So I want to thank everyone for joining us. Thank you very much, the speakers. Thank you, all the team from the COP26 coalition. Thank you so much for all your support. It's been a pleasure to be part of this amazing program. And we hope that you got a, um, a good sense of what the what we're dealing with in terms of uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, use the potential of the waste of uh, zero waste solutions as a climate uh, strategy and also as a way to actually fulfill social justice that is very much needed. So thank you everyone again for joining. You can see in the chat um, the some information about contacts. You can see our website uh, no slash burn.org for more information and i'm going to close here to be respectful of the program thank you so much for joining us <laughs>